Hello, I'm Paul Beckwith. I'm continuing my discussion on these horrendous wildfires in California, a town of 27,000 people in Northern California, a town called Paradise of all things, was completely destroyed by a wildfire a week ago. And, you know, a week later after the fire, the, the number of people that are confirmed dead in the fire keeps increasing. It's up to over 70. But the scary thing is that there's almost 1,300 people that are unaccounted for. And one of the problems is, is that people in this town, whether they were in their cars or in their houses or, or in the stores or whatever, were completely basically incinerated by the fire. Um, they, they were, there, there's very few signs that they were there at all. I mean, they've, they've basically been completely transformed in, into dust that's blowing in the wind. I mean, I mean, it's just, um, it's, 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 it's horrendous. So, so, um, anyway, I want to continue off and talk about some of the science, et cetera, of what's happening. So, so this is Earth Null School. Okay, so if you just Google, let me uh, straighten the camera a bit. If you just Google Earth Null School, then this is what you what you get. And I'm zooming into basically the area of Paradise, California, and I'm looking at the chemistry, and I'm looking at the carbon monoxide, and I cycled through, and here we are. This is November tenth at um, 2200, which is 10 p.m. Uh, local time. And you can see the very, very high levels of carbon monoxide are indicating, you know, this is the, it's being produced and it's being blown by the surface winds, which you can see here in the background. There's also the fire down here. Um, this is Malibu on the ocean side here that had tremendous fire damage, a lot of movie star homes, etc. But this is a fire here, which swept through and basically took out the town of Paradise. You can also see that there's high levels of carbon dioxide. So when you get complete combustion in a fire, you get CO2 produced. In complete combustion, you get carbon monoxide. This is uh, SO2, sulfur dioxide, that's also being produced. And then the particulates here. So so uh, basically, this is um, PM10. So any um, particles that are um, that are 10 micron and smaller are shown here. If we go to PM2.5, these are the particle diameters are 2.5 micron and lower, and then PM1 here. So there's not much change between these. So what you can see is that um, because there's not much change here among these, that would indicate, you know, there's lots, there's lots and lots of these small particles. Now the problem is, is any particles smaller than 2.5 micron, they can get lodged deeply inside the lung. As you inhale, they go through your, um, your respiratory system, and they can go right into the lung, into the alveoli, into the particles that extract oxygen from the from the air during respiration, and they can get lodged there and stuck, and they can lead to cancers and long-term health problems. They also lead to emphysemas and asthma. They, they exacerbate any pre-existing medical conditions, but they're very, very hazardous to your health. So you can see that all of these particles are being produced. Um, this is the surface winds in that location. Um, and you can see what the jet streams are doing here. Okay, so this is the, so this is a problem. So the jet streams are coming here. These winds on the ground are being, as you come over the Sierra Nevada, the winds are, are uh, they're brought over the mountain and then they descend through the valleys. The air gets compressed adiabatically just because, you know, it's descending. Um, the temperature increases, so the relative humidity drops right off. 
The air is very, very dry and it's forced through the mountain passes. The winds pick up and what's happening is it's knocking down a lot of the power lines and uh, those are then sparking, leading to fires, igniting the really, really dry vegetation and then these, these fires are spreading like crazy, horrendously. So this is the situation that we're seeing. We're also seeing um, things like fire nados. So this is the, the these images were taken um, these are various fire NATOs and in, in various fires around the world. So what we're getting is we're getting there. There's uh, so much energy in the dry kindling and the fuel and the dry trees, etc., that we're getting these um, very very rapid upward convection. And in the case of the you know high winds with the surface effects and the friction. We're getting turbulence, we're getting rotation, we're getting these, these, uh, th these basically fire tornadoes. And in fact, uh, in Canada recently, we had this sort of situation where there was a fire NATO, you know, I think it was in BC, British Columbia, and it actually sucked up the, the uh, fire hose. It picked up the fire hose and these firemen are trying to pull it back down. Um, it's, uh, you know, so basically this site, I went to Google Images and I just looking at fire NATO. So we're getting these phenomena. Now, the Santa Ana winds that I mentioned before is the jet stream is slowing down and getting wavier because we're, the Arctic is getting a lot darker. It's absorbing solar energy, energy. It's warming a lot quicker than the rest of the planet. So that lowers the temperature gradient between the Arctic and the equator. The jet streams slow down and become wavier as a direct physical connection, a direct, um, it has to happen. Um, and uh, so we have a high pressure area here, persistent. The winds go this way around the high pressure area because air leaves rotates to the right in the Northern hemisphere. So you get an airflow like this. So you get this air coming over the mountainous, over the Sierra Nevada in California, and then it extends downward. So it's very dry and it heats up adiabatically. It gets forced and accelerated through the mountain passes with very, very strong gusts. There's a lot of turbulence and you can get, you get a lot of fires, especially if the gusts blow down, knock down a power line, create the sparks ignite the fire or you get campfires that are not put out or you get cigarettes thrown carelessly from cars or you get sparks you know anything can ignite these these fires it's just uh, it's just waiting to happen this is a view uh this is a view looking down okay so the winds come here it follows the valleys and you get these they, they're called the, the uh, Santa Ana winds in Southern California, and they're called the Diablo winds in Northern California. So they get these very, very high winds, and it's so dry, um, it's, just a, it's just a problem waiting to happen. Now, this is a good website, wildfiretoday.com, and it talks about, so it talks about the recent things, like Trump visited, and he was saying, you know, Basically, we need to do a lot of raking and we need to, like, like he, he, it's absurd. He jumped through hoops, you know, not acknowledging, we know it's climate change. We know it's extreme weather. We know it's jet streams. We know it's, some regions have droughts, others have torrential rains. And we know that there's weather whiplashing from one to the other, but he's, you know, still trying to deny that. So this is some images um, of the fire and the region. Um, okay, so this is, th these are some images here, paradise is here, you know, just di at different times and with the streets and so on. I mean, it's just, you know, horrendous conditions. Um, I looked at, you know, what temperatures are we talking about for these fires? So if you've got flames one meter in height, you're talking about maybe 800 degrees Celsius, or, which is about almost 1500 Fahrenheit. Under extreme conditions, a fire can give off 10,000 kilowatts per meter of fire front. 
that would we're talk, that would be flame heights of 50 meters or more, flame temperatures exceeding 1,200 Celsius, okay, which is 2,192 degrees Fahrenheit. These fires can burn extremely hot. Uh, flash point for wood, 572 degrees Fahrenheit, according to this. Um, but of course, you know, bark will be a bit more resilient than that. So these fires are burning super, super hot. So, you know, to get some more information on these fires, this is Wikipedia on article on fire, another one on combustion. So it's trying to, you know, go through and have a look at some of the, you know, they explain, you know, what combustion is, what some of the flame temperatures are. Different colors correspond to different temperatures, but not always and so on. One thing I did want to point out is in the combustion thing, um, you know, it talks about the oxidation, the chemical reactions, incomplete combustion producing carbon monoxide, complete combustion, it's more CO2. Um, they talk about the turbulence of the flames, etc. But I wanted to draw your attention down here at the bottom to, well, there's temperature. So the combustion temperature depends on um, the air to fuel ratio, the heating value, so the type of um, fuel, the energy in the fuel, and basically um, the specific heat capacity of the fuel in the air, things like that. Now instabilities, okay, combustion instabilities are typically violent pressure oscillations, you know, in a combustion chamber, but the same conditions are happening. So think of paradise, the town, um, the combustible houses are burning like crazy. They're producing, the, the hot air is rising like crazy at incredible speeds. It creates, it creates a low pressure area on the ground. You know, the, the grass with the odd tree nearby are going to be much higher pressure relative to the pressure of the, uh, the air pressure near the house. So the air from those regions is going to be sucked over into the low pressure area of the house, heated up, and then uplifted. So, so this turbulence, this activity, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure is why some areas um, appear to be, you know, basically escape the fire, and, and other areas there's there's huge incineration. It's it's the dynamics of of the fires, and the fires are burning a lot hotter than they were before. So. Of course, we have these conspiracy theories, these very, very weird conspiracy theories that, you know, that... <laughs> so, the, there's a claim in, in these circles that the fires are caused by directed energy weapons. Government-directed lasers bent on destroying homes, property, and lives, okay? Like, this is, this is totally absurd, absurd. So, this article describes, you know, that what these um, directed energy weapons sort of they're in research stage what's happening with them um, you know how they're being spread here we go flat earth youtuber going by the name odd reality was pushing it last year it's come up again this year this also talks about um, you know chemtrails and harp and all these other crazy conspiracy theories and the latest is that hey all of this abrupt rapid warming is due to a uh, lack of sunspots, the grand solar minimum. So, you know, the, these things get out of hand and they really prevent the true action that is being, that is absolutely required on climate change. We have to declare a climate change emergency. You know, this article talks about the fire damage and on different homes and how that can affect things and uh, you know, I looked up fire protection suits. So you know, look, I mean, firefighters wear specialized equipment so that if there's a flashover or something, that they can survive. So, so I found this company, and uh, you know, you, the basic idea is if you have an alumin, aluminized suit, insulated on the inside, aluminized, you know, fire is basically. The heat from fire, it's thermal radiation, it's reflected by the suit. These suits are good to um, about 3,000 degrees Fahrenheit, which is about 1650 